The organisers of the Paris Olympics we talked about this a couple of nights ago. They wanted to make the athletes eat less meat to help stop global warming. Well, the athletes jacked up at that, as, uh, as you know. But global warming extremists, they aren't giving up, I'm afraid. In fact, you are being urged not to just stop eating meat, but to start eating insects instead. Now, three weeks ago, the Singapore government actually approved the sale of 16 kinds of insects and spiders to be sold as food. And the left-wing guardian said, oh, this is great. Eating worms could actually be a sign of things to come to fight global warming. In fact, the powerful World Economic Forum has pushed this too, giving five reasons we should eat insects to stop climate change. And the Australia's, Australia's own agriculture department, it's licensed the growth and sale as food of three insects, the super mealworm, the house cricket, and mealworm beetles. Now, in fact, for $15, you can buy, well, actually, it's now sold out. <laughs> Right, you should have hurried. A pack of crunchy crickets in barbecue seasoning. And joining me is journalist and author Tony Thomas, who's written about this push to eat more bugs for Quadrant Online. Tony, great to see you. What is driving this push to eat insects? Well, there seems to be a greeny faction in CSIRO that believes that farming isn't sustainable to uh, solve the uh, population's hunger and it will destroy the environment. So, uh, in addition, uh, they're, they're uh, cranky that uh, uh, livestock creates 18% of global emissions and uh, nitrogen fertiliser creates 5%. So their idea is that if we can swing farming to uh, insects, uh, there will be not only less land use, but a lot less uh, CO2 emissions coming out. Well, and then they can wrote, even rewild this is a bit the skip. farms, yeah. Well, Tony, you actually write, and this, this, this is a bit that freaked me a little, CSIRO, now you and I know it's really fallen hard for the climate scare. So he'd actually wrote a report recommending we do eat insects, right? And this is a report that slipped by everyone yeah, except right. you, of course. Uh, and it's even claimed it could be another big global warming Australian industry, like Chris Bowen claims green hydrogen will, and claims that averages were actually Australia's first agricultural scientists. I mean, there's scientists as well now. The, I mean, seriously. And they ate insects, which is true. They did eat witchetty grubs. So uh, the, uh, Tony, that many would now want to eat witchetty grubs when there's bread, steaks and potatoes around instead. Is there really a big industry in this insect business? No, well, the CSIRO is incredibly optimistic. They had this big conference in... Uh, Brisbane and they flew in experts from Cambridge University and Mexico and Holland and uh, and all over the place and uh, I must say it was rather funny the, the the conference was written up by one of the CSIRO guys called Brian Lessard and he's known as Bry the Fly Guy because he found a new horse fly and he named it after the pop star Beyonce but unfortunately the horse fly wasn't edible. Anyway, CSIRO wants Australia to become a sort of a mealworm and cricket superpower with the help of subsidies and taxpayer grants. And this report says, as younger Australians become more worried about climate change, edible insects have the potential to become a secure food source. It even suggests, uh, for example, uh, uh, kangaroo and cricket meat sausages. All right. Well, I don't know if this is going to take off, uh, frankly, Tony. Uh, any sign that people are really going for it, that it's uh, making huge inroads into our agricultural businesses, CSIRO fondly hopes? No, it's complete nonsense. Uh, even the CSIRO says that if everything goes really well with this industry, it'll create a turnover of $10 million a year in five years' time. Well, the primary sector's a $100 billion a year industry. $10 million is, is absolutely nothing. But uh, they're very keen on the Aborigines uh, uh, being the vanguard of this industry, and they say that the Aborigines will lend the industry an incredible and compelling distinction. 
Well, I don't know. Um, if I served up uh, dinner to uh, friends like Warren Mundine and it was insects instead of a good, juicy steak, I think Warren would storm out in a great half, just <laughs> sprinkling the Aboriginal pixie dust on it. I don't, I don't think it's going to sell it to anyone. But there you go. Tony Thomas, thank you so much for your time.